fearless executive director and author Win Winona Harder to the stage. Let's give her a round. of a political revolution and it's been spurred by a diverse movement of millions of young people who are engaging in politics like never before and challenging the politics of the status quo. We need to follow their lead. It's a matter of life or death. The dirty energy thugs are using our system of legalized bribery to buy politicians of both political parties. They intend to drill for every last drop of oil and gas, no matter the consequences. As usual, they're working to buy this election. The Koch brothers alone plan to spend almost $900 billion. While Fox News blathers propaganda about climate change, scientists are warning us that we must keep fossil fuels in the ground or our children will face a global climate catastrophe. In less than a century, the Antarctic ice sheets will melt. Washington, D.C. will be underwater. And like you, I've decided if we're going to save people on the planet and work on all of these other issues, we got to get dirty blood money out of politics. Just look at the current battle over the Democratic nomination. Bernie Sanders wants to ban fracking and Hillary Clinton has been forced to talk to skate very near that position. That was no accident. It is through a mass movement that began in New York and that spread across the country. Yes. It's an inspirational yes. David and Goliath story. It's about building political power. When we called for a ban on fracking, our coalition, they ridiculed us. They said it wasn't powerful. But New Yorkers against fracking organized a, la a large statewide coalition, and we won. Yes, yes. This is just one issue. Imagine what could happen if all of the movements represented here today got together and fought together on all of these important issues, uniting and using our organizing skills. To win, we must put behind us forever the meager goal of working for what is politically possible today. People want to work for the kind of world they really want. Yes. Let's keep the momentum going. Join us in Philadelphia at the National Democratic yes. Convention yeah. for a clean energy yeah. revolution march. If you, if you want more information, text REVOLUTION 69866. Let's have the revolution today. It is my pleasure to introduce an amazing woman, a good friend, and a personal heroine. Dr. Dr. Sandra Steingraber is a bold and feared, fearless leader in the climate justice movement. Besides being a dedicated activist, she's a biologist and an amazing author. In 2011, she won the Heinz Award with a $100,000 award, and she gave startup money to our coalition in New York. Sandra is leading the fight on a gas storage expansion plant that is being built in the abandoned salt caverns along oh, yeah. Seneca Lake 
in the Finger Lakes. Please welcome Dr. Sandra Steingraber. Yes! Yeah. And I'm here to say that corruption means more than trading money for votes. When corporations inject their vast wealth into the political system, what they're often buying is silence. And that is no more evident than in our ongoing climate crisis. Climate itself provides us oxygen through the miracle of photosynthesis. It provides us food through the miracle of pollination. Our climate is on the brink of collapse and there is a public silence about this existential threat to all of us and to all of our children because money is doing the talking. I grew up in the gas fields and the coal mines of rural Illinois. And when I asked my grandmother why there wasn't more conversation about these issues, she said, silence is the sound of money talking. Silence is the sound of money talking. I think that's why we're here today. Yeah. Yes, yes. In New York, we demonstrated that that problem, the link between silence and money, is not insurmountable. We live over top of a bedrock that contains a mother load of methane. And we know that if we blast that out of the ground using our drinking water as the club to shatter that shale, that we will not only poison the water deep below our feet, but we will send climate killing methane into the atmosphere high above our heads and threaten people for generations to come. And we in the scientific community have good peer reviewed studies and white papers about all of this. But we saw them, one after another, deep-sixed and called into question by industry who was dominating the political process. So we in the scientific community did something different. We formed a group called Concerned Health Professionals for New York. We summarized all that evidence in plain spoken English. And we not only took it to our elected officials, we took it to churches and rotary clubs and libraries and junior high school auditoriums. We took the science to the people. And we inflamed the people with the science. And, and, in, and so inflamed, they became a political movement. And that's the model now, as science advisor to Americans Against Fracking, that we're taking to the whole nation. Because what the science says is that we can use green chemistry and green engineering to do everything we need to do. But those innovative, brilliant ideas are being held hostage by the oil and gas industry. Yes. So if you know more about how the stock market is doing, then you know how the plankton stocks are doing. The plankton, which is providing you one out of every two breaths that you breathe, and they're in trouble. And if that's news to you, that's because money is the sound, silence is the sound of money talking. And that's the silence that we're going to break. Yes. Yes. So Democracy Awakening is essentially a hostage rescue operation. Yeah. We're going to rescue green chemistry and rescue green energy from where it's currently being bound and gagged in the corner and bring it on to the center stage. And in that mission, as part of that hostage rescue mission, I am playing to win. Yeah. Yeah. As Winona reminds us, this is a David and Goliath fight. And the good news is, we get to be David. Yeah. We might be tired and we might be scared, but we have the best slingshot of all. We have the courage of our convictions. Whoa. And by the way, I'm not tireless and fearless, and you don't have to be either to join this movement. I'm a tired mom. But I know that I love my children more than the oil and gas industry loves its quarterly earnings. Yes! Yes! Do you? Yeah. Do you love your children more than yeah. they love their money? Yeah. And you also have the courage of your convictions. Yeah. And I know that I'm a cancer patient, and I'm always scared. 
I'm more scared of my next MRI, I'm more scared of my next cystoscope, and I'm also more scared of my children's future on a fracked up planet without pollinators to provide food and plankton to provide oxygen than I am the inside of a jail cell. Do you feel that way too? Yes. Well, then you also have the courage of your convictions. And I'm also a biologist, and as a biologist, I'm always scared, and I'm always tired. I'm tired of testifying in that building behind us again and again on the evidence for harm. I've been part of the President's panel on cancer. I've been part of the National Action Plan for breast cancer. I have testified before congressional briefings, before the EPA, I've been involved with the Centers for Disease Control, the Health and Human Services. I've done all that and over and over again. I have seen the evidence that science has laid before this government ignored and silenced and that makes me tired. And it makes me scared for the future of our children. But if this government will not listen to my voice as a scientist and the voice of the day to speak, then tomorrow morning they will have to listen to my body that sits in civil disobedience on the steps of that Capitol. As scientists and people of faith together commit civil disobedience on Monday, I invite you to join us because if civil disobedience can free India and deal with civil rights, it can bring science into the, into the future and it can make cancer patients and mothers and biologists all speak by getting money out of politics. Thank you.